KTN News. Fellow Kenyans, once again, welcome to our daily briefing on the status of coronavirus in the country. Yesterday, we updated you on what's happening in areas where movement has been restricted to contain the spread of COVID-19. We outlined measures that, if allowed strictly, would help us in restoring normalcy in the affected areas. Today, we are once again appealing to you to continue observing the restrictions imposed and guidelines issued to restrict movement in and out of the designated counties and estates. As I mentioned, these measures are not aimed at punishing people. Indeed, we appreciate that these measures create a great deal of inconveniences to everyone. Your day-to-day -day activities have been disrupted. However, we are facing a very difficult enemy, the corona virus. And a time comes when every person must make sacrifices for the greater good and for the common good. This is that time. I must say that many Kenyans have risen to this challenge and are strictly abiding by the directives issued. Let me also state, we have observed that there are a few individuals who are still intent on playing hide and seek by using unofficial routes to move in and out of restricted areas. Few as they are, their actions can be potentially dangerous. I want to remind such individuals that such behavior is not heroic and can very quickly erode all the gains so far made and cause problems for the country. This is because in doing so, God forbid, if they are infected, they are spreading the disease to other areas. I am therefore appealing to such individuals to stop this behavior if we are to flatten the curve. Fellow Kenyans, since we have started giving these briefs, we have repeatedly, we have repeatedly advised our citizens on the necessity of adhering and observing the measures and restrictions that have been opposed to the point that it has become a common mantra for us to deliver to you. We may sound very repetitive to you, but we shall keep doing this because it is this and change of behavior that will be able to help us to overcome this pandemic. This is not normal times. Experiences of other countries and now our own experience suggest that basic measures of personal hygiene and the requirement of social distancing are the most effective ways to limit the spread of the virus. So we will continue to preach this message. And Kenyans, we will continue to appeal that you abide and strictly observe the measures that we have put in place. Fellow Kenyans, the ministry will continue to conduct targeted testing in high-risk areas. In the last 24 hours, we have tested 922 samples, out of which 14 have tested positive for COVID-19 disease. All 14 cases are Kenyans. This now raises 
the number of those who have tested positive in the country to 621. The overall number of samples that have been tested in our labs for COVID-19 so far is 29,430. When we disaggregate these positive cases by counties, the results for the last 24 hours show that 10 of these positive cases are from Nairobi, three from Mombasa, and one from Machakos. You will note that every day we make the briefing, one county or more join the list of those counties that have now registered COVID-19 positive cases. Today, Machakos becomes the latest county to record a positive case. This brings to 19 the number of counties that have registered cases of the disease. 13 cases were picked by our surveillance teams, while one case is from our quarantine facility. In terms of the estates where these cases are located, four are from Kasarani, two from Makadara, one each from Omoja, South Sea, Iru, Ir, in, Iru, Irigu in Dagoreti South, Machakos, and a mandatory quarantine facility. The three in Mombasa are from Likoni, while the one case in Machakos is from Athi River. In terms of age distribution, these cases, 11 cases, range from the youngest age uh, of uh, 11 months, old baby, and a 49 years old person is the oldest case. And in terms of gender, nine are males and five are females. I'm happy to note that today we have five new discharges. This brings the total number of those who have recovered from the disease to 202. These are achievements that we must celebrate. This would not have been possible without the dedication and commitment of our healthcare workers. And I think we must remember them all the time, these frontline health, healthcare workers. They are the healthcare, health, not only healthcare workers, but a number of other frontline staffers, including our security system. Uh, we must appreciate the work they do in their line of duty and placing themselves in the front line. And I want to thank, thank them for their courage and spirit of patriotism. To fellow Kenyans, I want to appeal to you to be understanding and warmly receive our brothers and sisters who have recovered from this disease. This is the matter of stigma that we have talked about. We should not stigmatize anybody who has contracted COVID-19 disease. COVID-19 disease is a disease that is claims some lives, but most people recover from it. And it is not a disease to be stigmatized. Therefore, we should do what we can to not allow that to happen. And we should welcome and celebrate those who have overcome this ordeal and who have recovered from the disease. Yesterday, I informed you about a flight that was coming into the country to bring back Kenyans who had gone to India for treatment. I'm glad to inform you that 237 Kenyans, together with their family members and caregivers, arrived last evening and were received by staff from the Ministry of Health who facilitated their clearance. Many of the returnees were accommodated in hotels last evening at government expense. 
while being processed to proceed home for self-quarantine. Similar flights are expected into the country in the coming days. Fellow Kenyans, you are all aware that the country is currently experiencing heavy rains that have caused destruction of properties and displacement of Kenyans. This is compounding the COVID-19 response. The displaced people have been forced to congregate in makeshift camps with the risk of banding together which exposes them to the possibility of contracting the virus. We are, however, working with county governments and other agencies to educate them on containment measures against COVID-19. On the issue of cross-border truck drivers, the Ministry of Health is expanding testing capacity to all the counties. This will enable the truck drivers to be tested from the point of origin of their journey. I want to reiterate that the importance of cooperation in this fight, it is one in which quick victory can only be possible when all of us fight together and move together. I therefore urge each and every one of us to continue observing the guidelines outlined and to practice the containment measures advocated by the Ministry of Health. Uh, thank you. And, uh, for Citizen TV, is the government concerned about the laxity that Kenyans continue to display, or if you may like, fatigue over COVID-19? Because uh, a spot check shows that the protocols that have been issued by the Ministry of Health are no longer being adhered to, especially by uh, in Nairobi. Uh, secondly, is about the, border, the porous borders. The porosity of the borders is becoming a great concern, causing uh, at the border points of Tanzania and Wajia, uh, I mean uh, Somalia, the Wajia points. What is the government doing to ensure that all the uh, non-gazetted entry points along the borders are protected to ensure that uh, uh, those from other countries uh, neighboring do not cross over to Kenya and uh, you not know, uh, spread the virus? Thank you. Ndoka <laughs> Je inamaanisha kwamba hakuna yote ambaye alipimwa kutoka katika mtaa ule ama waliopimwa au kupatikana kuwa na virusi vya corona na vile vile hapo jana mlitangaza kuhusu visa viwili katika kaunti ya Kajado na wakazi pale wamekuwa kiuliza ni hususan katika maeneo yepi pale Kajado Probably one more last question Zainab Ismail NTV I'd also like to know you've talked about people trying to sneak in and out of the restricted areas especially here in Nairobi, in Isli, and Old Town, Mombasa. So what really, as a government, are you doing to be able to manage that particular situation at this point, to at least stop the transmission and infection of this disease? Rita Tinina from KTN. Uh, still following up from my question yesterday, how many healthcare workers, frontline workers, from um, Bagathi and KNH, are you accommodating in hotels as you had uh, promised? There are also complaints from KMTC in, uh, that some of those who are there are still being forced to pay for their quarantine, yet you had said uh, the government would be meeting uh, the costs. And still trying to find out in terms of uh, individuals, the 29,000 samples, how many individuals are those? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I will respond to some of these questions. The others I will uh, have uh, the DG respond to them. 
Stephen Latour, citizen, the laxity of Kenyans and fatigue. We do understand that, and we have repeatedly said that these are unusual times, and we really have to make great sacrifices to be able to live through this time. We understand that as human beings, yes, we will feel fatigued, but we should not allow that fatigue to make us break the restrictions and rules that have been put in place because we will simply be turning the wheel backwards if we do that. So that is why every day when we come here, we give the message to the nation, the importance of being able to follow those measures that have been put in place to restrict ourselves, to observe the social distancing, to avoid gatherings, to practice the uh, good hygiene, to wear masks, because these are the measures that will be able to break the cycle of transmission of the virus. So it is human to feel fatigued, but we are living in very unusual times, and we must make those sacrifices, and we must hold on to those sacrifices until we are able to overcome uh, this pandemic that we are, we are fighting. The porous borders, porous borders uh, have always been a challenge, not only in terms of the pandemic, but also in terms of trade and illegal movement of commodities and people. Uh, and you know that as a country, we enjoy uh, long borders with some of our neighbors. Uh, it's impossible for government to be able to, to monitor uh, every mile of every border. But there are borders that are known, Panya routes are known, and what the government is doing is to beef up security levels so that some of those Panya routes can be, can be closed <coughs> off uh, and provide more security personnel to be able to man these borders. I think uh, our Ministry of Interior is very much on top of that and trying to boost up the capacity of its personnel to be able to monitor these borders. Um, the question on the 11-year-old uh, child that we have recorded today, I will leave for the DG to respond to that and provide you the details, as well as uh, whether the 922 that were tested today, how many of those were cases from Isli, you will also respond to that. Um, as well as the two cases in Cajiado, uh, which localities uh, they come from. I think you might have that data, DG. The issue of sneaking in and out of especially areas that have been restricted is an issue of major concern for us. And uh, I want to reiterate again that that kind of activity is going to turn us backwards and we shall lose all the gains that we have made. It is only a few individuals, we think, who may be doing that. Uh, and we have uh, the security uh, authorities within the country to be able to ensure that this kind of thing does not happen. If you remember yesterday, I also appealed to the recipients of these people who are moving out of these places that are restricted to act in a responsible way and not accept or invite these people who are leaving a place that is uh, uh, restricted and come into your household and spread the disease to you. That is another appeal we want to make. Do not accept this. They may be your kin, but remember, they may spread the disease and misery to you. So we will continue to appeal to both of those who want to leave those places. Our appeal is remain there, please. Remain there for the sake of the common good of this country. Those who would accept them, do not accept them. Again, for your own common good and the common good of the country. 
Uh, the final question was on uh, how many healthcare workers are accommodated in hotels, and uh, the DG will respond to that. Uh, as far as quarantine payment is concerned, uh, we did announce the decision of government that quarantine in public facilities, the cost of that would be met by government. And uh, I think if it is happening, it's probably because of maybe a delay in the administrative process of effecting that, but that uh, directive still stands and government will meet anyone who is put into mandatory quarantine into a public facility. The cost will be borne by government. Let me ask the DG to now respond to some of the questions. Thanks, uh, CS. I will start with the question of the healthcare workers who have been exposed. Uh, 34 out of 621 healthcare workers have tested positive for COVID-19, either directly in their place of work or indirectly, like I know of a doctor who visited a friend who was COVID positive. So healthcare workers contribute to about 5.5% of the total number of COVID cases in the country. Uh, but I want also to reiterate that uh, so far the healthcare workers have done well even when they have tested positive for COVID-19 and we have not had a mortality or a death of a healthcare worker. Remember healthcare workers are the forefront in fighting this pandemic, putting them at the greatest risk of contracting the disease from the patients that they serve. And that is why His Excellency directed that we develop a, welf a welfare package to be able to cushion them from this risk, uh, but also to recognize their patriotic duty as they serve the nation. In terms of the samples tested, out of the 29,000 samples tested this far, about 21,000 are primary tests or index tests. The others are repeat tests to find out whether somebody has recovered in case he or she turned positive in the first test. Uh, I will be able to share with you after the press the actual number of healthcare workers who are staying in the hotels. Uh, in terms of the child who is 11 months old, we have reiterated here over and over again that nobody is immune to getting COVID-19. And remember, we have even had a child who was two months old. So the need for all of us to be able to take the infection prevention control measures seriously. Uh, testing for ECLE. Yes, yesterday we did not do targeted testing for ECLE because as at yesterday we are doing, we have two sets of machines, an automatic machine and a manual extractor. Yesterday we are doing a manual extractor and uh, also our kits for the automatic machine were low, so they were not deployed yesterday. So the number that we have reported here is just from the rapid response teams. However, I'm glad to inform you that today we are expecting uh, a shipment of 8,064 tests for the automatic machine and another 16,000 by Wednesday next week. If this one comes in country, then we'll be able to scale up our targeted uh, uh, testing. The patients in Kajiado, I know one was a driver from Tanzania, I'll be able to share with you the location of the other patient. But also just to reiterate what uh, uh, the CAS talked about, uh, the porous borders, uh, through the multi-agency teams, we are keeping a very keen eye along our southern border with Tanzania and of course our eastern border with Somalia. And our appeal to the public is that you should also become the public police yeah, in case you realize that somebody has come in who has been away to be able to lie, lie with the security and health teams to inform them. I know in certain counties, even if you are to leave Nairobi now and go there, in the next one or two hours, 
you will be under quarantine because of the people's will. Uh, I think that is all that okay. came my way. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, DG. Uh, now that we have uh, dispensed with our press statement and uh, the questions, allow me to uh, introduce uh, Jeremy Awori, who you know is the MD of uh, APSA Bank, uh, the private sector. Our private sector, I must say, have uh, stood up to really uh, support the government in the COVID-19 response, as you are aware. Uh, they have been very active in uh, uh, mobilizing resources and support in this response. And today we are joined by the CEO uh, because they are making a donation of uh, PPEs to the ministry. Uh, we shall be receiving that donation, but I will allow the CEO to speak to that, uh, invite him to the podium to say a word or two before we receive ceremonially the donation that is being made. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ari. I'm, I stand here before you today representing uh, ABSA Group, ABSA Bank PLC, and I'm as a board member of the COVID-19 fund. I'm, ABSA as a bank remains absolutely committed to supporting Kenya and Kenyans fight this pandemic. Uh, and we recently made an announcement to contribute 50 million towards fighting this pandemic. And this was a contribution to the COVID-19 emergency fund. What we are doing today is really recognizing the patriotic fight of our healthcare workers, who we've heard about just a few minutes earlier. Uh, and we are here really to, to donate a humble donation of 220,000 masks. Uh, these are 200,000 200, uh, medical surgical masks, and then another 10,000 uh, 10,000 N95 masks, among others. We, we felt we wanted to do this donation at this point because this, this PPE equipment is critical to the day-to-day -day fight to protect our healthcare workers from contracting COVID-19. Um, the fund itself is also working on a much more significant uh, acquisition and donation of PPE equipment which our chairman, Jane Karuku, will be announcing in short order. In, in this donation um, of masks, which is roughly worth 15 million shillings, uh, we intend that donation to go towards Kenyatta National Hospital, uh, towards Mbagathi, uh, as well as Kenyatta, Kenyatta University Referral Hospital, and then also Coast General and some of the hospitals in uh, the Mombasa County, where we're seeing the number of cases rising. So ours is uh, really to reiterate that we remain committed to doing whatever we can to support the government and the ministry to fight this uh, pandemic. Uh, we continue to work closely with them uh, and in particular to support our frontline healthcare workers who are doing a, a, a very diligent job in very difficult circumstances. So I'm um, as I say, um, we, we, we are happy we could make this small contribution. Uh, and as I say, we are looking as a fund to, to, to really bringing even more uh, equipment to, to enable you to, to be able to, to fight this pandemic. And we'll continue to work with you uh, as this journey unfolds. And hopefully we, we eradicate and defeat this, uh, this COVID-19 sooner rather than later. So with that, I would just like to say thank you. Uh, for this opportunity, and I think we can. I'm not sure how you would like to do the the, the donation. Yeah, we are not uh, with social distancing. Yes, yes. Uh, I want to thank uh, APSA for the donation that they are making, and as well as the donation that they have made to the COVID response fund and their continued support. Uh, we do appreciate uh, your support. And uh, we look forward to working closely with other members of the private sector as they come forward to support us in this COVID response. Thank you. We can do our...
You can do a ceremonial uh, a, a ceremonial handover. Let's come this way. So we have, we, we have just this as a token, but the boxes will go directly to uh, to the hospitals. So two hundred, two hundred thousand of these and ten thousand of these. Two hundred thousand individual masks. Individual masks. Yes. And then ten thousand. Okay. Yeah, because we we want to make sure we cover not just the doctors and nurses. But all the people who are working in the hospital and we find these are also appropriate compared to these. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, tomorrow.